Think of your favorite teacher. Wouldn't that teacher be a little cooler if they taught you how to build a robot? We sent Marina to meet a teacher like that, and her name is Tanya Coates. When you pack for school, you need your backpack, pencils, and paper. But in this classroom, there's one more thing you can't forget, your micro bit. To find out how a tiny piece of tech can help train the next generation of computer scientists, today, I'm talking to Tanya Coates. She's an elementary school teacher in Jerupa Valley, California. Growing up, I never had access to a computer. I didn't really get the chance to use a computer until college. I decided I wanted to become a teacher because I wanted to provide students with things that I necessarily didn't have when I was in school. Access, um, exposure to different technologies, and I try to create a space where they feel like they want to be in. Tanya teaches second grade and runs an after-school computer club. Today, she's going to tell me how she helps children explore computer programming. How do you teach kids this young about computers? It is never too young to learn about computer science. You need that time to foster that learning and build upon your skills. Also, when you're learning at that young age, it's amazing what you can do with art. How do you help the kids learn computer science through art? They use their own creativity to design and develop something that they find interesting. So basically you leave it up to the kids and kind of let them decide. Yes, they are gonna be the future designers of technology. Giving them that avenue to be creative through art is going to keep their interest for years to come. Where are you hoping that they take it? There is artificial intelligence, mechanical engineering, software development. The avenues are endless. Can I see one of the projects they're working on? I have a student named Andrea, and she's gonna show you the amazing things we're doing with computer science. Tanya helps guide her students as they discover fundamental computer concepts. She looks for inspiration from the Pathfinders Online Institute from our sponsor, Infosys Foundation USA. Each lesson builds on a skill that they've learned from the previous lessons, and they can build on it and apply it to whatever project that they want to work on. Pathfinders not only helps students, but it actually helps teachers connect with other teachers and share ideas that they're doing in their own classroom. One place where Tanya's students use programming to express their creativity is this mechanical garden. It was made by fourth graders like my new bestie, Andrea. Nice to meet you. This project has moving creatures, crafts, and lights, all designed and programmed by students. Why do you like to code? Because you can express yourself with all the, the things that you make out of code. How did you learn to code? From Miss Coates. She taught me to code a lot. I really like code. And she, and she technically inspired me to do all of it. Oh, do you hear that? I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so what does the spider do and how does it move? We make it move by um, code. The position of servo can move up and down. And the rotation of servo is when it goes 360 all the way around. The position of servo, we want it to go 90 degrees. We're going to download all the code down to the micro bits so it can program. Students download their code into the pocket-sized computer and connect it to a controller called a hummingbird. It can do things like adjust servos or change the color of LEDs. So there's red, green, and blue. What color would you OK, so I want two colors. Um, I want 50% red and 50% blue. After Andrea quickly changes a few lines of code, she downloads it, we place it in the controller, and voila, the custom lights I asked for. 50% red, 50% blue, good job, girl. Were you able to do it fast because you just have it memorized? I've been practicing a lot, and practice makes perfect. So if something doesn't work the first time, what do you do? I just try a new way. Have you ever tried one way and it still didn't work, and then you had to try a couple different ways? Yes, I just kept trying and never gave up. And you never gave up. And then do you get an A because of that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not part of my grade. <laughs> You're amazing. You're amazing. And I can't wait to see what else you do in the future. Well, thank you for allowing us to share how we learn without limits and sharing our garden with you. OK, high five. Bye, guys. Thanks for having me. If you're watching this, you must have really liked the video. Make sure you follow and subscribe and check out these other videos that are even better. No, really, I've seen this one over a hundred times.